the Big Ten media rights situation. What's the very latest? Well, it looks like we are on the precipice of an official announcement coming down. And it seems imminent. Everyone in our industry thinks it's imminent. Full disclosure, obviously, I'm employed by CBS. Our company is, is knee deep or neck deep according to reports in this whole thing. So we're not here to share any industry information. We're not here to, you know, divulge any company secrets. What I do want to do is talk on a very surface-based level and then dive in in the future about what this means for all of you, not just Big Ten fans, but what this means for all of you. Because I want to forget the numbers for a second. We'll have time to chop up numbers. Who paid what for how many games and what time of day are they going to air? You can read about all that, and you probably already have. But I want to ask you something. You notice how a lot of people in college football disagree, and even you and I disagree sometimes. I've noticed that there's one thing 90 plus percent of you agree on with me, and that is that you don't want any one network having a disproportionate chokehold on the sport. No one thinks that's good for college football. There is no network out there that is run by so many angels as to... You saying, yeah, give them the entire package. No, everyone's got their faults. Everyone's got their flaws, us included. No one wants one network to own all of this inventory. And if you feel that way, then we agree. And if you feel that way with me, I got some really good news for you. So let's dive in. Let's, let me remind you, if you haven't been glued to this, because I know it's kind of a thing that we nerd out on, uh, you may not care about it as much. John Oran of Sports Business Journal reported last night and then again this morning, ESPN is out of the bidding. They are out of the running for the Big Ten media rights deal. Now, let me also remind you of this. Here's how this is going to work. Fox will keep that noon game. Fox will have the number one Big Ten game every week. That's not what we're talking about. It's not the entirety of the Big Ten package that's gone to market. It is parts of the Big Ten package. And so what you have is you have bidding taking place for who's going to get the number two Big Ten game and maybe number three Big Ten game on a given Saturday. And we've got basketball included here, too. We're talking about football. And so according to John Oren of Sports Business Journal, ESPN out. Their bid, not good enough. We'll talk about the numbers down the road. CBS is in prime position, as is NBC. That according to John Oren. That's not anything that we shared on a company meeting earlier today. Here's the follow-up quote. Okay, so think about so far what I just told you. The Big Ten, they already got Fox. You're looking at potentially CBS and NBC. That's all the big ones. That's the three that your dad and mom used to watch when they were kids. So you got them all in the room. And then, and you know what it's time to do. It's time to pop the paper. I want to also add this little cherry on top. And then I'm going to hit the rewind button about three weeks for you. This also from John Oran yesterday. ESPN presumably out of the bidding for the Big Ten media rights, and then, quote, ESPN is expected to aggressively, therefore, go after the Big 12 and Pac-12 media rights. Director Colin, I think you have a piece of video from three weeks ago. I want to remind you guys, you are not wasting your time when you're watching this show, and here is, once again, proof. Roll it. Here's where it concerns the Big 12 and the Pac-12. There are going to be some other big players at the table who were told, you lose. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to look in front of them. They've just got this this huge mountain of cash that they've allocated to spend on Big Ten football and basketball, mainly football. And they were told, your money is no good here. But your money's still here. And so what are they going to do with it? Well, they can do one of two things. Either they can just say, well, there goes the SEC. There goes the Big Ten. They're locked up forever. The ACC is not coming online anytime soon. I guess we're just not going to have college football on our airwaves. Uh, Spoiler alert, that's not the route they're going to go. Or they could go Route B, and they could say, all right, what else we got? There's the Pac-12. Now, the Pac-12 is not going to be nearly as attractive a product as the SEC. The Pac-12 will not be nearly as attractive a product as the Big Ten. But they will be a product. And someone, in fact, multiple someones out there, are going to have a ton of money and a ton of shelf space that they need to fill. You're not in as bad a position if you're the Pac-12 or the Big 12. I think it's kind of a one or the other scenario right now. They're not in nearly as dire a position as it seems. John asked in the live chat, why did I just turn gray? 
I, I think it's a good touch. I think when we play SOTS, which is a soundbite, I think we do need to do that kind of coloration to it to basically show you that's from the past. This, this more bright, vibrant color, this is present, this is live right now, but that was from the past. Well, did you notice we kind of nailed that? It's almost like we knew something because we've been talking to someone. Sources, as they call them. Um, not only did we have the right feel on that, but now I want to tell you where it gets even better. A lot of good news in this segment for all of you. What I said there is, hey, a lot of folks are going to bid on the Big Ten. Someone's not going to land it. That money's still going to be in their lap. And then it's, it's like you go to the grocery store and you, you, you go to the car lot and you planned on spending on a car and they're all out and you're just sitting there with all that money. What are we going to do with it? A responsible person would just go invest it, put it back in the bank. We're not responsible people. So we've got to spend it somewhere. Oh, and by the way, your wife has demanded that you come home with groceries, that you come home with a car. And it's the same way here. Whoever it is, if it's ESPN, if it's whoever it is, they got to have stuff to put on that shelf. Namely, live college football. And there is not an endless supply. Scarcity has entered the chat. And scarcity is suggesting that you better go grab the Big 12. You better go grab the Pac-12. You better get whatever you can. And here's the added bonus. If you'll notice in John Oran's reporting, not only is ESPN whiffing on the Big 10 and therefore back on the market, I haven't heard a single mention of Apple. I haven't heard a single mention of Amazon. If those three or really just even two of the three, but if all three are still in the room and they haven't dropped a dime on live media college football rights yet, then it's a heyday for the Pac-12 and the Big 12. They are not gonna get Big 10 money. They're not gonna get SEC money. They're not gonna be poverty conferences though. They're going to get probably well above and beyond what you know traditional market rate would be because the market's changing. And that's good for all of us. It's good if you're an, an Auburn fan. It's good if you're a Michigan State fan. Because unless you want to see the rest of the sport fall off the proverbial cliff, then you have to be able to have those conferences subsidized. And in a perfect world, you don't have to subsidize them. The good old-fashioned market does it for you. And I think that's about to happen. I think you're going to see ESPN move aggressively for one or both of those properties. And there's also an understanding in our business right now because no one has taken the full dive in with any streaming service. That means no conference has said, we're signing with Apple. No conference has said, we're signing with Amazon. Why? Because they're terrified that audiences aren't going to follow them there. They're terrified that you and I are married to the concept of holding that remote control and watching traditional programming on Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC, and we're not going to we're not going to pull up our smart TV and go to Amazon to watch Washington State versus Arizona. Look, maybe we will, maybe we won't. But what if one of those streaming giants comes to you and says, we're willing to pay 230% market value for your media rights package? It's going to happen. It's just not an if, but a when. I wonder if it's very close to happening. I think especially attractive would be the connection between the Pac-12 and Apple for obvious reasons. So uh, that, that's all on the table. So I think they're going to get a lot of money and they've been written off for dead and I don't think that's the case right now. But here's my message to Big Ten fans. Uh, you won. If this goes down like this, you're the huge winner in this room. I, I like the Big Ten's position above and beyond the SEC's position. But here's the other thing to think about. Because I guarantee you, you've either thought this or you've heard someone say this over the past 24 hours. The huge industry takeaway is if this ends up panning out, it'll be the first time in like four decades that Big Ten football and basketball, it's not airing on ESPN. That's a huge deal. I, I don't want to overlook that. That's a huge deal. Here's the follow-up. My message to Big Ten fans on this is relax when it comes to worrying about ESPN. There's a lot of concern out there right now. I've heard it a dozen times a day already. Oh man, the SEC They've got exclusivity with ESPN. ESPN owns the college football playoff. Could we be about to get screwed out of spots because we don't get proportionate coverage, proportionate, proportioned coverage to the SEC? Could ESPN be about to box us out? Well, no, they're not going to. But if they do, it's going to largely be irrelevant, and I'm going to tell you why. That contract between ESPN and the college football playoff expires in 2025. And here's what else you need to realize. The structure, the landscape of our sport is shifting radically, in case you haven't noticed. There is no world. I would bet you a ton of money on this. 
There is no world I see where you get an expanded playoff and you get the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and whoever else you need to sign off on that media rights deal to sign off on a playoff media rights contract that gives one network the entire playoff. There's no way that's going to happen. No way. Even if it stays at four teams, that's not the way they're going to let it happen. But imagine this thing moving to eight or 12 or 16 teams. Almost dry heave even saying it. But imagine the playoff moving to 12 teams. So you've got added inventory. You've got more games. You're insane if you think that the Big Ten or the Pac-12 are about to sign off on saying, yeah, yeah, why not? We'll let ESPN buy that entire thing. There's no way. Some of these conference commissioners have, have expressed that already. George Klockoff in the Pac-12, I don't think, took more than two or three breaths on his first day on the job before he said, I want to take the playoff contract to market. Don't let ESPN uh, buy the rights to that thing again before we take it to market and see what the network, networks are going to be willing to bid on it. Here's what your playoffs going to end up looking like. After 2025, whatever they agree on, I will, you know, pound my fist on this table in anger and then that'll subside and it'll be what it is. But your future college football playoff is going to look strikingly similar to the NFL playoffs. Now, within the context of an expanded playoff, this is good news. If you don't like it like I do, put that to the side. If we have to go down that road, this is the only way to do it. You absolutely do it like the NFL's done it. I'm not for the professionalization of college football, but there are some aspects that the NFL uh, pulls off in terms of their structure that, that I do think would be very advantageous for college football to mirror. And one of them is the way, from a television standpoint, they structure their postseason. You don't tune into one network to watch the NFL playoffs. You catch the early game, the AFC game over there on CBS, and then you got the NFC 430 game over here on Fox, and then you may have a, a primetime game on NBC and the Super Bowl. What does it do? It rotates networks every year. I think that's exactly what your college football playoff is going to look like one day. You'll have semifinal games on one network, and you may have conference uh, tie-ins, or you may have specific bowl location tie-ins, and that's its own spider web. And then you may very well see the national championship game hop network to network. I don't see sign-off coming if they all don't agree to do that. There's no way that's going to happen. That'll be your next big stalemate. They're going to sit in that room and of course, I would imagine Greg Sankey and the SEC are going to want to uh, lobby as hard as they can for ESPN to land that thing. Well, there's no interest in anyone else outside of the SEC, maybe the ACC, but outside of those two for letting that happen. There's, there's no advantage to that. And so, you know, for obvious reasons, I think it's going to go to market. Anyway, I'm saying all that to say you got to take your wins when you can get them. This is a win for us. The more that you can pull the majority of the sport away from a certain network in the Northeast. And the more that you can divide that thing up amongst all of the bigger media entities in the country, the better the sport is for it. You know, I, I listen to you guys constantly. I've got my own gripes about ESPN and, and certain aspects of their coverage of our sport. No one's perfect, but there are certain aspects of the coverage of the sport that I think have grown either very stale or very tired. Well, the only answer to that is take some of it away from them. And in the Big Ten, you just got your wish. You took a lot of it. You took all of it away from them. We'll see how this ultimately pans out. Uh, this is probably news that will be finalized either this week or next week. But I do think, and my professional opinion is, it's good news for all of us.